Welcome back, everyone. Yay, my hockey worked. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. That is, you uh, know, I, I will check and see. Go ahead. I was going to say OBS, now that I've been using it for recording lately. Is there a visual cue on your screen that you can make happen? Ooh. Like you could I don't tracks? know, because mine records on another computer, remember? Oh, um, yeah. So I, it doesn't, they don't talk in that way. I mean, what I do is, is your OBS visible to you? It is. It's on or my other like... monitor, but I have to look over at the other monitor. I really like, one thing I liked about Fraps was, the, you know, the little counter was there, and it turned to your mm -hmm. FPS counter, and it turned red when you were recording. So it was right. real I, easy I to turn see. I turned that off. But oh, I, yeah, it is I, real I kept it on in the corner because it was just a nice visual cue that I was recording. And, right. Um, but I was just curious if OBS had, like, anything that I didn't know to turn on, but whatever. No, I normally just glance over every so often and see what that recording number is first time, and that's about it. I'm trying to figure out which way do we want to branch. Because we talked about a water thing. I see you way the hell over there in the distance. I don't know where yeah, you're I'm going. seeing where where the where the the bottom of the ocean is. Forty four is the bottom of the ocean over here. So do we um, want to dig? There's down a ravine. That we hit. So here's my idea. I think we dig towards the main island from the pyramid until we hit this ravine, and then we make some kind of underwater glass bubble, maybe. Okay. Like come over here. You see this ravine? It should be about right here, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me get some air, and then. Down. Okay, yeah, this ravine <laughs> was definitely uh, a deep ravine. Um, yeah, so we could hit that and then, I don't know, make some kind of water feature thing. Water Maybe this feature. could be the farm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, our it's our outdoor deck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe this could be where the farming wing is at since there's like water we could use like the natural like a natural flow from the ocean or something i don't know but you want to get down to this is 47 40... yeah i think 43 was what the lowest spot i hit before i went into the ravine so um, you want to get down to 43 as the roof yeah I think where we're at at this point, we could stop expanding outward. And if we want to dig down any further before we branch. I, you know, I will say, I've had a lot of comments that say, if you go down, you better go out. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Like, people, because yeah, at one point you had talked about continuing to dig down and not necessarily having to expand it. And I've literally just had people say, like, if you go down, you better go out. Basically, like, it's not going to be right if you don't also expand out well i don't think that they i just fucking took off i just literally flew like i was peter pan for no reason is it was it like me jumping up this one and a half black height kind of ran, randomly just like started like... i just started flying straight up um i mean i don't think they have my vision <laughs> they don't know what i've seen in my mind that's possibly true the viewers um, on my channel might not have your vision because I think, because I really think that, you know, we get out to a certain distance and then we dig all the way down to bedrock, but the branches out each direction don't go out at bedrock. So but I'd like to dig all the way down to bedrock. So let me, let me try to get down to where we're talking about. So 43, you want the as the ceiling. Well, not the ceiling for this room. For the hallway. That goes out there. Um, yeah. So it has to be. You probably don't want it to be right on our head. You want it at least to be three wide, right. or three tall. I mean, so we have to go dig down to thirty nine. So this is where I'm at right here. Is at thirty nine. Yeah, I think it's fine to stop going out at this point. Okay. I mean, we have we have. There's a lot of digging to do, and if it does look terrible for some reason, we can always go back and finish digging out. Right. Uh, you know, because I was thinking like pillars in each corner with maybe like some dark oak or something like that, like a different something that is a completely different color from this the colors we have right now. Um, I don't know. No, I'm okay with that. I, I think we can start digging that and see what it like ends up looking okay. like. 
Because like, because all it is is us not digging. If we do end up saying, "Oh, we have to dig out as well," we still have to dig this area. Right. Like, right there's no right, way right, we right. look at it in this, this area is like a, somehow we're missing. <laughs> we're doing extra. We're not doing extra work. That's right. What it comes down to right. But makes sense. Uh, so gotta ask. As a parent now, mm -hmm. what random things have you come across being a dad that you didn't necessarily plan that you were going to have to come across, but after the fact you were like, holy shit, I acted exactly how I needed to act in that situation. <laughs> Um, I know hmm. it's a weird it's a weird way to ask the question. Maybe I can explain my scenario first, and it will help you. Okay. Basically, so we were Julia's family was here a couple weeks ago. Uh, her sister was staying with us from up from New Orleans, not the one that lives in DC, but the other one that's from New Orleans. She was up staying with us, and you know, of course, you know, Jack, the oldest, is running around having fun with everybody, you know, doing his thing, getting all riled up, and just you know, mainly has more energy with the more people that are in the room than you know uh -huh. he has just in general. I walk over into the kitchen at some point. And I'm doing something. I don't even know what I was doing in the kitchen. I don't know if I was getting breakfast or like what, what I was trying to do. But it was nothing like important. I was just there doing something. And I look over and I realize that Jack has made his way into the kitchen. Which is, uh, it's an open kitchen. You know, it's like he comes yeah. in there all the time. No big deal. But wasn't paying super amount of attention to him or the things that were around because it's not just me anymore. Now it's a bunch of people in this house. Like, they're, you know, Julia's sister is staying with us. Her mom and dad were also in town, so they were around and, like, you know, doing things. And so it's full house in, in general. And yeah. I realize he's... She says something like, Oh! And I see him pulling something off of the counter above him. Oh, Lord. And I, he's all of a sudden just starts and like, my mind isn't even triggering like what he's doing at this point. It's just kind of like he's doing it and it's happening so fast that I'm not really paying attention. And he all of a sudden just starts screaming. And what I realized had happened was Julia's sister had come and gotten a cup of coffee. Coffee pot hadn't been on for two hours. So it's like cold coffee from the coffee pot. She had uh -huh. put the cup of coffee in the microwave, microwaved it for a couple of minutes, put it on the counter. For whatever reason, Jack walked in the room, which is something that he never does. And that's why it's another thing that's very weird. Decided he saw this cup that he wanted to have whatever was in it. So he grabbed it and pulled it down. And as he was pulling it down, he was very careful with the pulling down of the cup. So it's not like it splashed on his like, face or anything, but he sloshed it, which made it spill over the edge and spill onto his hands. And right when he started screaming was when I looked over and realized like the reaction that he was having was because he started realizing the coffee in his hands was, it was, this is spilling onto his hand was hot. So yeah. it was like burning his hand and he ended up like it sloshed a little bit more and then he dropped it. And of course the glass like shattered all over the floor because he dropped it. But he was like immediately just like crying in right. pain. And as like, you know, Julia's yelling from the other room. Oh my God, what's wrong? Cause she's not even seeing like what's happening. Like she just hears him screaming out of nowhere. Like, and just, yeah. you know, clearly a pain scream. And I was standing right next to him and it, it's weird because for me, the instincts kicked in to literally just grab him. I kind of understood briefly enough what was going on that all I did was pick him up, go to the sink, throw on the cold water and force his hands under the cold water. Yeah. And it was something that like. As I'm holding him under the cold water, my mind is catching up with the scenario of what is happening. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, well, holy shit. Like, that was just, like, instinct <laughs> to right. to get this done. And, like, I, I don't even know what just happened, but it just happened because I just did it. Right. 
And, like, and luckily, like, and l- luckily, like his hand, like he had a one, his thumb got like the worst of it on his like right hand, and for like a day he had like a red mark on his thumb. But for the oh, most part, there was no like major burn or anything like that. And yeah, I think par- uh, partially attributed to the fact that he, I was, he was instantly in cold water. And then I got him to like play around for a while because he wanted to play with like water and colored dyes. So I filled up like this tub of water and let him start putting food coloring in the water, and I put ice in the water too. So he was just yeah. playing in the water because he thought it was cool afterwards so it like not only took his mind off of it but also just kept his hands in cold water for a long time. so i've always been told to not put cold water on burns oh uh, you put cold water you don't put ice i've always been told to put warm water no on when no, i worked well, when God, i worked at a I, restaurant that's what they always said to do mm. if you ever got a burn to not put cold water and a doctor told me this one time too um, I've never heard I'm this. I'm not trying to like never heard this in my like life. That. Um, but the reason why the what the doc the way the doctor described it to me is that it's such a difference between that your body can hold on. Let me let me just Google this. So you know what? Whatever you're about to say, like it, it makes sense. Like you, the concept of cold water, quote unquote, on a burn is stopping the burning. Right. So putting warm water that's not scalding hot water no matter what is also going to stop the burning and maybe be less of a shock and maybe maybe it's because you can tolerate it better because jack clearly did not want to tolerate the cold water for a while i had to like force his hands under it until i you know had him start playing with the water with the food coloring because then it was like something fun um it's kind of like when (laughs) it's a little bit different you know i told you the story about the pepper in the eye and all that stuff and having to force him to like flush his eyes out with with water that was more difficult because that was clearly causing more pain but it had to be done type of deal whereas this was more just like holding your hands under cold water it'll hurt after a minute and so he didn't want it to happen and warm water probably would have made it so he was less against it so I guess the concept would make sense unless you're saying there's a physiological reason why warm water is actually better than cold water for removing There is. Burn. Apparently it it helps your skin begin the process of healing. Like there's a whole like I, I don't want to try to read you this uh this medical journal. No, please journal please read it from the beginning. The medical journal is written in words I don't even want to is it is it in Spanish? You can find the English translation. No. Right? Hold on, I'm trying to find like a two TLDR. <laughs> Most journals. Well, okay, depending yeah. on what journal it is, it could have. Uh, uh, There's it, a conclusion. If it's, bro- if it's broken down yeah, into the four concepts, and the last one being conclude, con- or the third one being conclusion, the last one being discussion, jump to the conclusion, and that will actually tell you what the article like finalizes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess medical journals really do okay. have a TLDR. It says, um, in order to limit damage after burn injury, burn progression has to be prevented. Besides delaying burn progression, the application of warm water provides an additional benefit by improving the microcirculatory perfusion, which translated into increased tissue survival as opposed to cold water. Okay, so what it's saying is that cold water is going to constrict your blood vessels, which is going to lead to less circulation to the area warm water will quote unquote i i guess i don't know how warm water Ooh, i almost just died because i fell off the stairs holy crap <laughs> uh warm water will lead to vasodilation in theory unless your hand is so hot from the burn that it's already vasodilated uh but it will not constrict the blood vessels to the point that cold water would therefore allowing more blood and microphages and white blood cells and such to flow to the area. I guess the conceptually and physiologically that does make sense. All right, Dr. Jeff. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's an accurate statement to make. I mean, honestly though, in the case that you're, you were in, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, no. Uh, in the the case... co- co- he didn't have a major burn and cold water soothed him. So yeah. Yeah. Know, and, yeah. And luckily it was not a major burn because you know, it, it, it it could have been hot coffee from, you know, the, oh God, I don't know if I ever told you the story. When I was at a, uh, I used to hang out at Coney Islands all the time. I don't know if you know what a Coney Island is. The, like, um, in Michigan, 
all like 24 hour diners, even the non 24 hour ones, but all like stupid little diner places are called Coney mm-hmm. Islands of some way, okay. shape, or form. Isn't Coney Island the place near New Jersey? It, it's like a New York like amusement park or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, it's yeah. like okay. Coney Islands are supposed to be known for selling Coney dogs. Like that's the thing. Like I, I don't know why it is a thing, but you know, it's Coney Island. So I grew up no diners knowing them as Coney Islands. So when okay. I say Coney Island, that's what I mean. I was hanging out at this one, one night. We used to hang out at Coney Islands all the time. And I remember one night just being there, hearing this crash come from the table across the restaurant, like, behind us. And it was a really loud crash. And then all of a sudden hearing somebody just go, breathe, 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 breathe. Okay. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? And then out of nowhere, you heard this baby, like, basically catch its breath and just let out this shrieky cry. What the hell? Well, what had happened was the person who was at the Coney Island had gotten a coffee, had reached for something, spilled the coffee, and it dumped all over this infant child who was probably, like, two months old. Like, very, very, very young. And that's why it was like she yelled breathe because I guess she dumped it and the child just like in shock and horror, you could tell right. it was like one of those, you've seen kids before, yeah, like when they cry so hard they can't catch their breath. Yeah. It was that, but like prior to the crying starting and then the shriek just came out because like the pain receptors, I don't know, or and caught up with the baby and like this, that, the other. And I ran over there and I was only, I was like early, early 20. So I was a ski patrol person at the time but i was not a nurse and like not into yeah. much much medical except for like on ski hill medical stuff and you could just tell it like it was obviously a complete accident because this mother was freaking out you could just tell that she thought she was just the worst person in the world I for so. what just I, happened I, I would feel that way too well, i mean it's got to be awful they we pull off the uh the, like the onesie that the baby had on and it was just peeling skin like oh, immediately no. just peeling did y'all skin. call the ambulance immediately? oh yeah they, the, the people at the coney island called the ambulance immediately i yelled for somebody to bring over a bucket of water and some rags and this woman i threw some cold rags onto the baby's chest as soon as they got out there but the woman like which made the baby like cry a little bit more and i remember the woman picked up the baby and just kept holding the baby to her chest going oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so like you clearly like devastated person for you know thinking that she was the worst person in the world but so devastated to the point where she wouldn't let anybody else try to touch this baby so this burning uh-huh. mechanism is still going on and it took it was so hard to convince this woman to at least let us put these cold rags between her and the baby while she like coddled this screaming baby um but that was it, it, whew. and you know when you're dealing with coney islands and you know diners and things like that you know their coffee is way hotter than the average coffee because they're always yeah. got you know pots running all the time because that's what people are there for is to drink coffee in the middle of the night and it's i mean it was brand new fresh pot of coffee probably you know 200 and you know 10 degrees or something mm-hmm. like that like just right. under boiling that had just been poured and dumped all over mm-hmm. this baby oh my god that's that awful. was i, I can I can picture those shrieks in my mind all the time because it was so like ear curdling when the baby actually started screaming. So I that has never like gone away from yeah from my mind, but I also remember and maybe that's why I remember her being so unwilling to let anybody else jump in and do anything that keeping control of the situation and just like letting instincts kick in and doing what needs to get done despite the child thinking it's a good or bad thing at the time it, and, and i don't know maybe i don't know if you've ever had experiences like that with as, as a no, father I, and... I definitely have not <laughs> wait what'd you do i don't know i didn't do anything <laughs> 
much. No, the, no, uh, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing, nothing to see. The mob see farm here. wasn't working. And he must not be at his computer because I keep asking him, you know, is he in the nether? And I just want to I want to get my pick to where I can do something this episode. And can't do anything. Nothing to see here. He must have been in the nether because the moment I kicked him, everything started spawning. Uh. I'm sure you've had experiences as a father, though, of, like, jumping in. I and... can't think of a moment where this, like, like a, an extreme situation has happened where I jumped into action, though, you can't, honestly. You can't tell me, like, your daughter's never, like, fallen down the stairs or, like, just done something that, like, tried to run out into the middle of the street and you went and, like, you know... Hip checked, uh, you know, a, a person who was about well, we a bicyclist who was about to run her over here. or something. Like, like I, there's I no, there's no street to run out into. There was a time, uh, one time, me, me and Crystal were packing up to go to the beach, and um, she had wandered off to go see my grandma. My daughter had, and uh, it wasn't a big deal. She she walks up there occasionally, um, you know, so we weren't really worried about it. But then this truck comes over the hill, and suddenly pulls off the road. Um, in between my grandma's house and our house and me and crystal both had the same thought like oh my god like this truck just came over the hill and hit her because there's no reason to stop there um at all and like that was a moment of extreme panic where her and i both just looked at each other like holy shit i and we both like crystal just started screaming and running towards uh, my grandma's house and you know i was running right behind her and then here comes my daughter, like, what the hell's wrong with y'all? <laughs> What's wrong with uh, you guys? I mean, something had fallen off the back of the guy's truck, basically, and he stopped to get it. Sigh of relief, I'm, I, oh, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I yeah, mean, that was one of those moments where, you know, you thought you done fucked up for life, basically. Yeah, we, we, um, we, we've had those problems where, like, we just have, you know, you know, you know, the, the little one will be sleeping in the bed, and uh, I'll be in the other room, and it was just a couple weeks ago. And I'm sitting in the room, and I know he's asleep, and... I hear, wah, oh, look, he woke up. Thunk! Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, run into the room because he, you know, fell out and was sitting on the floor. But so, absolutely fine. Like, no issues. <laughs> Just, you know. There was a point where my daughter, she was probably a little over one, and she was jumping around. Well, not jumping around, but rolling around, messing around on the bed. And I kept telling her, I was like, you're going to fall off and you're going to hurt yourself. And she was at the age where really cause and effect hadn't, you know, <laughs> been ingrained yet right and i kept right. telling her like when you hurt yourself and you're crying don't look at me because I, I told you and again she wasn't at the age where this means anything to her um and so i kept watching her and she got really close and she was going off the edge of the bed and uh whenever this happened i grabbed at her leg to try to to try to like save her basically and i made it way worse <laughs> um, because oh, yeah, yeah, so didn't you like her knock leg. her off the bed yeah, she went over to the edge of the bed and, like, rammed her damn head into the bed frame, basically. Uh, so she would have probably just fallen on the floor and been fine. But instead, I grabbed her and she cracked her skull right into the metal part of the bed. Um, so I'm pretty sure I made that one worse. <laughs> Clearly, she was fine. But it was yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She cried. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, but remember, I did tell you. Um, <laughs> Didn't tell your daddy was going to be the one to make it worse. But I told you something bad would happen. Yeah. yeah. I, remember, um, I, I guess I don't remember this, but my mom tells me about it. It's funny. My dad won't tell me about this. And he's the actual real, like, savior in this story. When I was a little kid, I think I was, like, three, we used to go to this place called Viamid somewhere in Canada. It was, like, this weird, like, stay at these cabins and there's boats and, like, all this stuff. And my family used to do, like, this yearly trip there. And uh, I guess they had this old lighthouse that was all these cement stairs going up to the very top of this old lighthouse with no railing mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, you know, this is back in like the early 80s. And this lighthouse is probably built in like the 40s or 50s or something like that. Yeah. And I guess I went running up the stairs because I wanted to get oh, to the top Lord. first. And I went to the side and fell right over the edge on like the eighth floor. Oh, my floor. God. My Did they catch you or uh, my what? dad apparently caught me by the ankle, like Holy reached over shit. and one handed ankle grabbed me when my head was like straight down toward this concrete. You could have died. Oh you yeah, I could, died. I could easily be just a dead guy right now. Um, wow. And you know that's like the. the luckily, my dad had the reflexes of a fucking cat and a fucking ninja. Yeah. You know, it's he. Um, 
basically saved my life back then. And he never talks about it. My mom talks about it, but he right. never he never mentions that. Like <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. We went to Cape Hatteras recently, and uh, me and my dad had went to Cape Hatteras Lighthouse when I was younger, and I didn't make it to the top. I got about halfway up, but I was just like. I can't. Do it. I also didn't make it to the top. <laughs> I made it about eight floors yeah. up, and then tried to go down really fast. Uh, <laughs> but so we went recently, and they've they've moved the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse because it was about to fall in the ocean. I remember when there was all this drama about it here in North Carolina when they were moving that, and everyone was up in arms about them moving the lighthouse and all this. But anyways, they ended up finally doing it. So whenever me and my daughter went this year, it wasn't where I remembered it. Um, but you can see the spot where it is, which is now basically ocean. Um, so they did. They, if they had not moved it, it probably wouldn't still be there. But the thing that was wild to me whenever we, me and my daughter went and visited it is now when you get there, for one thing, you have to be a certain height to even enter the place. When my me and my dad went there, you went and you just walked up in there. It was no cost. It was just this lighthouse. It was no longer in use. And I mean, they would still light it, but it wasn't lit. You I know, mean, it was owned by somebody, ship. and somebody else lived there, and we were trespassing. <laughs> but, you know, it was yeah. just like, just yeah, walked we right were just in. walking it's in. No big deal. And they were like, well, who are you? And we were like, we belong here. <laughs> You're no, like, but anyways, Fuck you. We own you. <laughs> See you later. Um, but this time, whenever we went, it's like, you know, they, they completely tour, touristized it. Um, where you have to buy a ticket to go in, you have to be 44 inches tall to go in, and then you have to you have a set time that you start walking in. And before you can go in, you have to sit and listen to this 10 minute spew about how just take just take a break on every level. Just I mean, it's about 98 to 105 degrees inside. If you're here so. touring a lighthouse, you're probably old. Relax for a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, and I wish that they had had this shit whenever I was a kid, because I'll tell you, we got in there and uh, I got to that floor where I was like, listen, can we just stop? I'm tired. I want to take a break. My dad was like, mm, we're going. And uh, there wasn't no damn forest person or National Park Service person around to be like, no, no, you should take a break on every level. And so whenever my daughter was like, let's keep going, I was like, no, -mm, remember they said we have to take a break <laughs> on every level. The, 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 the people on the video said, they said. <laughs> there wasn't even a damn video, real person out there said out there waiting to tell you. Um, and I told my daughter, I was like, you know, I didn't make it up to the top of this thing before, uh, and I'm doing it today. And it really wasn't that bad at all. I mean, I did. I made her stop on every level, even if I, you know, I was like, I could keep going. But we stopped on every level. And we just, just stood by the window, which had, you know, a real strong breeze. So it wasn't like it was, even though it was over 100 degrees inside of the lighthouse, like getting one of those windows where the breeze was at, it felt all right. Um, but, yeah, it was just wild to me how different it was. And granted, it's been probably 20 years since me and my dad went. But uh, just how, how different it is now where it's like, <laughs> take a break and. How old, also, were you, how old were you when you went? Um, I was probably 10. Okay, so I guess old enough. I was going to say, because I don't remember anything about, you know, this uh, lighthouse I'm talking about. But I, I think, like I said, I was like three. So that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, no, I was it's... old enough. Yeah, I was old enough to remember it and um, understand what I was seeing and all that. Um, so I tried to take my daughter to a bunch of Everyone kept saying, you're always on vacation. But I was really trying to take her... I, I really thought of them more like field trips because I was trying to take her to ed places that were educational and would probably be talked about in North Carolina history this year. So, like, whenever she, you know, is, you know, reading about this or that and for the North Carolina history, she it'll be like, well, I've been there and I know what that looks like or I've seen that and that sort of thing. Uh, it was kind of my thought process. North Carolina um, has history? We got a lot of history, man. Rich history. Yes, a rich history of North Carolina. Uh, I know nothing about North Carolina history. Maybe it's because uh, I've never never been to that place. Yeah, you didn't have to take North. See, I had to take North Carolina history, and then the Texas wait, history wait, was done what? on a different. <laughs> you took a North Carolina history class? Wait, you, did the state you lived in not teach the history of that state? No. Really? Yeah, that's that's like a curriculum that happens. What? Like when it, and then, but Texas did it in a different year, so I had to take Texas state history too. You didn't take state history? No, I never took a state history related to. I grew up in Michigan. I never took anything related to Michigan state history. Huh? Oh, I've taken two state histories because I moved. 
I kind of would like to because I, I want to understand the whole concept of like why is there an upper peninsula? Why why is this part of this state? Like it doesn't even make sense. It should be a whole. Well, North Carolina state. history is really interesting because we have so many. We have such a diverse biomes and stuff. Like North Carolina history is pretty interesting because we have the mountains and the beaches and all of that. Uh, the Outer Banks, like. Ain't we have like the and, most you know, amount of one lakes of, the, you know, of any state of any Sorry, state in the nation. Michigan has like the most more lakes than any state in the nation. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I'm not saying Michigan shouldn't have history. Well, state well should have that's history. the thing is, like, I don't understand. Like, Michigan would have a rich history, You're right? That I've never been told anything about, really, <laughs> except the that's things really I've strange researched. to me. I thought state you history in North Carolina was part and of... Texas both you have to teach the state history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what state grade history are you teacher talking for here? Texas was awful. What'd you say? What grade are you talking about here? Now, see, that was the thing. Here for North Carolina history, uh, you do like a beginner kind of introduction around second or third grade, but then you get the actual like full on book. It's its own class with its own teacher in middle school. It's a full book? Yeah. It's its own class. You know how you take U.S. history? Yeah, it has yeah. one book. As yeah, well for well, U.S. There's history, also state history, and that's it's got its own book too. Same size book for one fiftieth yeah. of the other book. You know what I found? Did I tell you this? Did I tell you that I found out? Uh, I, I'm doing the book fair this week, so I've been at the school all week long, and uh, there's a new librarian, and so I've been getting to know her and talking to her. Uh, and uh, uh, sexy library. <laughs> And no, she's pregnant. She has two kids. Uh, Sexy library. You know, I actually, I don't know if she's pregnant. I think she is, but I am not gonna ask. Uh, that, um, that is very wise. Yeah. Um. But uh. <laughs> but anyway, she was talking about how curriculum changes have happened, uh, and she used to be a history teacher, and she said that um, they're no longer allowed to teach any history, Civil War or prior, because it's not politically correct. Uh, what? Yeah, they've removed all civil war. Any, 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 any talks of slavery or any of those things are not politically correct, so they can no longer be taught in school. Uh, At least here. Uh, what? Uh, what? Um, yeah, no, I lost my mind. I was uh, like, uh, but, but history's not supposed to be politically correct. Uh, history is history. It's facts. It's set in stone. That's. What, I still have a problem with the fact that you randomly find states are people that are like you can't teach evolution here because it's you know you know political boundaries or something weird like that and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about like can't teach that the earth is round because you know, you know yeah no i know like where where's the where's the final straw here oh wait like, that I, that that really pissed me off right, i was very upset about right, this you joined again i didn't see yeah, yeah he's again. i'm not longer in the nether and we oh, had i'm back i'm in the nether i'm trying to re i'm trying to get my things going <laughs> nothing's uh, happening at this place yeah Mm-hmm. Hmm. He's actually here now, though. We can't just kick him. Uh, I mean, you don't know he's here. <laughs> um. <laughs> but we're out of time anyway, so uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you guys this next time. This thing does not work at all if somebody's in the nether, huh? No. It uh, just doesn't do shit. Useless. That's crazy. I'm shocked. Hey, wait, one guy. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. See you guys.